How to improve your vision and awareness on the pitch? This is a question we get all the time. And when you think about it, besides all the technical aspects of football, vision and awareness is one of the most important things when it comes to becoming a great footballer. So in this video, we're going to list down some of the most important things you can do to improve your vision on the pitch. Now, I actually cheated a little bit, Peter OG, because I reached out to some of my homies in Finland who are professional coaches, and they suggested splitting this into two categories. The first category is, you know, awareness in the context of being around the ball, you know, like the technical side of things. And the second category is awareness in general, like what to look for on the pitch. If we start off with the category number one, we've spoken about this before. Actually, it was a video where you were in it as well. You know, having an open body positioning, so, meaning that, you know, you are facing the field as often as possible. You don't have your back towards the direction where you want to attack when you are receiving the ball. It will help you being more aware because you see more of the pitch. Then, of course, we have scanning, scouting the pitch at all times. Looking over your shoulder, both before you get the ball from your teammate and also right after your teammate releases the ball, you take a quick scan again, to see if you have any defenders around you. When you are dribbling and when you're looking at the ball, sometimes you're going to have to obviously look at the ball, try to look slightly in front of the ball so that you see the area nearest to you. And it actually makes a little bit of sense because then you can see if there is, you know, defenders feed closing in on you. Instead of just directly looking at the ball, difficult to explain, but you kind of see the ball in the bottom in the half. In the <laughs> peripheral of your vision. And when you take bigger touches, you then obviously lift your head up and see what's happening out there. All of these are actually great tips. Very good. When it comes to the point number two, category number two, awareness in general, what to look for, what's happening close to you and what's happening more out there in the bigger picture of things. So for example, where is your closest opponent who might come towards you and defend you? What is the situation with the guy who has the ball? Is there a defender close to him? Can you make yourself available? Or can you make a run that will then, in the other hand, you know, free some space for the guy with the ball? So, you know, you're freeing some space for the other guy mm -hmm. to run in. You get what I'm saying? I get exactly what you're saying, but I'm kind of out of touch <laughs> of all of this. So I'm just nodding, agreeing, and it sounds like good advice. Now, obviously, you also want to know how you can practice this. You want to keep your head up. So every time you're playing football, either with your team or some small-sided games with your friends, you constantly want to keep scouting the pitch, what's happening over your shoulder. Also, while you're doing team training sessions, all the small-sided games, the little ball possession games, even rondo, things that make you, you know, have to look up and see where your teammates are will help you. There's not a single exercise that will just help you become a better guy with a better vision on the pitch. This is one of those things that, you know, you, you keep developing over and over again, all the time, throughout your career. You're never going to be done with this. That's it, you know, watch a lot of games on TV, watch highlights on YouTube, watch players who play in your position and just, you know, Play as much football as possible. This is one of those things that, you know, juggling is easy to learn. You just repeat it time and time again. It's the same thing with vision and awareness. You just have to practice and live football as much as possible. But that's it for the tips. This is Q&A episode 32. Now, it's the first time ever that you are appearing in Q&As. How do you feel? I, I don't know what to do. Listen, let, let's give the man, let's give the man a round of applause. Wow. Man, you got a lot to learn. You already know, we're going to kick it off with football. football. I'm going to ask you the first question. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to hit go. you with the first question. Do you think that after CR7 left Real Madrid, Real Madrid is losing? CR7 was the key player for Real Madrid. One of my best friends, he is a huge Real Madrid fan. And I love to see him, you know, in pain because Real Madrid is, is losing more than usual. No matter which team loses a player, the level of CR7, you're going to be in some deep trouble. You know, it, it's going to like, who are you going to bring yeah. in instead? Like, he's a guy very difficult to replace. Let's just be honest. Yeah. But definitely they suffered a lot. Have they been successful in replacing him? Hell no. <laughs> no, but I think they, you know, it takes time to heal from a wound like that. And I think they will find a player that, 
not maybe not replace him, but will be a, a you know decent enough substitute to to take his place. Well, let's see. Next question: Can a futsal player? By the way, oh. sorry about the wind. Uh -huh. It's extremely windy here in Copenhagen. Can a futsal player play as good as he does? in an 11-a-side game? If yes, how much time would it take for him to adapt? Doing it on full time as a futsal player, you know, you know there's a lot of stuff, for example, vision and stuff like that. You know, you don't see the pitch on the other side. You don't think about that when you're playing five aside because you, you only have four teammates. But when all of a sudden you have 10, you know, there's a lot more to think about. Listen, I couldn't have said it any better. Like, you might have a difficult time adapting to the tactical things, but you know, obviously you can always improve that. Anyways, Philip, now we move on to the real talk. <laughs> now, you are actually a Manchester United fan, so this is a perfect question. Which player should Manchester United buy in the next transfer window to help the club? So I, I really wanted to see Griezmann signed for United. You know, that dream just crashed and burned uh, right in front of my eyes. I accept that. This next question is basically handcrafted for you. All right, come on, hit me. How do you deal with being benched? Everyone who plays football, nobody wants to sit on the bench, you know? Everybody wants to play, but unfortunately there's only 11 guys who can play at the time. But if you can't deal with occasionally sitting on the bench, especially if there is a better player playing in your position, this is probably not the sport for you in the bigger picture, in the long term. Because unfortunately, in football, just like in life, there are ups and downs. So if you give up because you haven't played in the last three, four games, eh, you know, unfortunately, your road in the game of football is not going to be very long. I know yeah. this is not a very nice thing to say, but that's real talk. That's how it goes, you know? Obviously, you know, you can try and be proactive a little bit. You can try and communicate with your coach and tell him, yo, what do I have to do? to play. I want to play. What do I have to do better in my day-to-day -day at the tr training ground? Why is this guy playing in front of me? Like, what is he doing better? One thing that pops into my head is that, for example, maybe you're just not good enough. Maybe there's a reason why there's someone better than you playing. Then you should rethink, okay, then maybe I should spend that extra hour to do dribbles, to do your own drills, improve as a player, because sometimes it's just not, you know, the coach's fault. Maybe it's you not training enough. Next up, we have the boot bag. What should I do if my football boot studs are too long? Because I bought the Copa 19.1 and the studs are too long and the fields I play on are really trash and it hurts my feet really bad. So, the simple answer here is to get different sole plate next time you're shopping for boots. For example, instead of buying an FG sole plate like I have here, you know, you might consider getting yourself a pair of AG boots. Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to be playing on hard, harder grounds. Yeah, and then there's some pitches that are, you know, so trash, there's not even grass on them anymore. Like I was in the Philippines and it's just dust and sand. And they still played with studs, but I would recommend if you play on a pitch like that to get the TF shoes. What is the best current football boots for indoor use? Anything that Yoma does is magic. Really? The thing is that, you know, it's different if you play indoor all the time or if you play indoor only in the winter season. Because if you play indoor in the winter season, you might not want to get used to a pair of different type of, of boots. If you use Superfly outdoor, you might actually want to get Superfly for IC as well. It's a matter of preference. Lovely. Now, we're moving on to the giveaway. And you yourself are actually gonna win yourself a brand new football. We're gonna be in touch. Congratulations, it's not either one of these two, but we're gonna be in touch. Which player could have been much better without his injuries? My first thought was R9 Ronaldo. He had a lot of knee injuries. Look, okay, obviously he achieved a lot in his career. Yeah. Um, but I guess he could have done even bigger things if his health, you know, didn't ruin his career after the age of 30. I would say Hatem Ben Arfa. Oh, what a talent. Like, he's still a really good player. Yeah. Imagine him without all of the injuries. Wow. I think we need a Hatem Ben Arfa without injuries in United. So, you know, tying those two questions together. Last question, the most important question. The question of the month. All right, I wasn't in on that one, but yeah. Wow, that was what, one what of the lamest things I've ever done in my life. Philip, what were your first 
high-end football boots. I'm inclined to say the Predator Absolutes. You know the white and gold ones? I know all about those. <laughs> I still think they're one of my favorites of all times. Yeah. I'm not sure, but like the first pair I can really remember, I was so damn happy to get them, were the Predator Manias. I might have had something before that as well, but like those ones just stick out for me. You know, it's a milestone getting your first pair of boots that you, you know, you pay for yourself. Well, I didn't pay for them myself, obviously. Anyways, guys and girls, that concludes today's Q&A. We talked a little bit about on how to improve your vision. Once again, you know, if you want to see some specific exercises, let us know in the comment section below. Also, use the comment section to ask us more questions. We can answer next month in the next Q&A. If you enjoyed PWG, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, you give know what thumbs to do. up anyway. <laughs> if you want to see more awesome videos, you can click the playlist right here. We make cool skill tutorials all the time. Subscribe to our channel. You already know. That's it for today. Philip, it was, it was lovely having you on board. Thank, Thank you for having me here. <laughs> That's it for today. We out.